Hello, how are you guys doing? These days, no matter what you do, people think you've done that with AI, isn't it? They ask, right? Is this an AI created video? Is it an AI generated image? Is it an AI created email? Something like that. But here's the problem. People categorize everything under the one huge umbrella called AI. But that is not true. AI has a different, different branches. Everything what you do is not just AI, isn't it? So if you are an AI engineer or if you are a software engineer who learn AI or who work in AI, then this video is not for you because this will be feel boring and just go and come back in the next video. In this video, I'm going to explain this AI universe in a plain English, especially to who are not AI engineers, especially to software engineers who are not work on AI and interesting on AI and also to general public. To understand this, you don't need to have any uh, technical or AI background, okay? Right, so AI is not a new thing. AI was there for decades. But thing is, in last decades, AI is in very hype. Now everyone talk about it and everyone trying to use it. So that is why this become a hot topic. Other than that, it is not something new. So when we talk about AI, we categorize AI for three types. Artificial narrow intelligent, artificial general intelligent, and artificial super intelligent. Out of these three, right now what exists is artificial narrow intelligent. Artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence is kind of a theoretical. So that is not what we are going to talk about. Whatever the AI we have, there are few layers of these AI. So when we talk about AI in general, also known as a conventional AI, it, this is how it works. You can show a bunch of cars, like hundreds of thousands of cars, and then you can ask to recognize the car. So then what it can do is, how, uh, like when you show the buses, lorries, and bicycles, and the cars, and like bunch of vehicles, it can separately identify what is the car. So that you can, think as a general purpose of general conventional AI. It is not like a very, very complicated as what we see things today, but that isn't simple either because now it's supposed to recognize your car out of all other vehicles, right? So usually you can get an examples like uh, IBM Watson. It's a really good example for this one. And also you can uh, get like a self-driving cars like a Tesla, what they have done. So you can think this as a, general artificial intelligent uh, things outputs also you can see like a robotic uh, medical procedures certain sort of robotic medical procedures and things like that why they are trained and they can do only one thing that's it they are well they are well doing it but that's only one thing so now we are going to next layer which is a uh, machine learning how the machine learning works is like this so how humans are learning so let's assume a newborn baby this newborn baby recognized thing by keep seeing and analyzing it. For example, if you're smiling, then this newborn baby keep observing it and he learned to smile. And when the newborn baby keeps seeing the same women and like close and loving and everything, then this newborn baby recognizes it as a mother, right? So likewise, that is how we as a human learn things. So likewise, we, if we apply the same thing to the machine, when you produce millions of data to this machine, then machine start to learn this. For example, if you go back with our previous example, so now you are sh showing small cars, big cars, racing cars, car without a hood, car without lights, car without tires, broken cars, accident cars, and so many variations of cars, not just natural cars, right? So now, by producing millions of images to this model, this model slowly learning what is a car. So as a result, no matter which direction you are showing the car, now the, the, this machine learning algorithm, the machine can identify this is a car. So best example for this is like spam filters. What the spam filter does is, when you tell in the spam filter, this is a spam, this is a spam, this is a spam, and also when they train with the millions of spam mails, so now when the emails, when you see an email, it can recognize this is a spam or not. Also like a Netflix recommendation system, that's also a good example. So it analyzes millions of data and see the understand the pattern and see, okay, this is how it works. It is same as the human things, but not deep as what we can analyze. That's a machine learning. 
So now, after the machine learning, there is a concept called neural network. So neural network is, I mean, it's arguably, it is not exactly as a stage of uh, artificial intelligence, but it is uh, sometime as well. So this is how it works. So in human brain, it's completely inspired by human brain and how we understand and how we learn things. So in human brain, we have something called neurons, right? So we fire millions, billions of neurons when you see something. Let's say you see a dog, right? So then it fires millions of billions of neurons and it trying to recognize this is, a, this is a dog and is it dangerous or not dangerous and whether you need to run or you don't need to run, so many things. So likewise, what the neural network does is it has a fundamental uh, thing called node or as a neuron. So it 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 results it pass into the next one and the next one and the next one. So basically, we identify three layers. One is an input layer, and the second one is a hidden layer, and third one is an output layer. This hidden layer, there are so many things are happening. So one layer results is passed into the next layer. So that is how basically neural network works. So now we can get the neural network and we can go to the deep learning. Deep learning is a next level of the machine learning, right? So we discuss what is the machine learning. So this is a deep learning is next level of that. So since deep learning also type of machine learning and since it is also machine, so you can say deep learning is a subset of a machine learning. So what the deep learning does is it do the same thing with the machine, what the machine learning does, but it use many layers of neural networks. So they are, that's why we call it a deep learning. So there are three main characteristics on these deep learnings. One, it may have very deep layers, many, many layers uh, passing this information through. And also second thing is it need a very large data set. So for example, for a machine learning, if you need a thousand, maybe this deep learning may be millions of billions of data, right? A thousand is not a number, the, it just for a comparison. And then third one is it needs a very high computational power, probably GPU, CPUs may not be able to do it because it's dealing with the multiple data. So what is capable to do is remember the neural network, it's, it has a many layers, one layer pass information to the next layer. So how many deep it is, then it how deep this can learn. So that is the, that's the beauty of this. The basic example for this is a Google Photos. Right. So if you're using Google Photos, you can see like when it uh, when you upload photos to Google Photos, it can recognize people from the places and even the people small faces it can recognize. So that is a that is a very good example of deep learning because it's analyzing through millions of billions of photos. It can recognize this is a human, this is a dog, this is a vehicle or whatever it is. And also out of that, it can recognize the photos you, your face in a different angles, even you with the shades, even with the cap, even like your lookouts, look other side, no matter what, it can recognize. It's a good example of deep learning output. And also sometimes you can categorize uh, to this like Amazon Alexa and Siri and all those things. And also, but this is like little arguable. Some people say uh, it, voice recognition is not just a deep learning. Yeah, it's arguable whether it's a just uh, you recognizing your voice and executing a command may not fall under deep learning. These, these like what fall under what is a very sometimes it's very cloudy because uh, it depends on how much it trained, what is the data set it used and how long and how, how far it can go. It's so many things determined by these things. So voice assistant may fall on the deep learning as well as may fall on the uh, machine learning as well. So now after that, we are coming to the superstar, which is a generative AI. So generative AI is not other section of artificial intelligence, but it's kind of a product of a deep learning. So sometime I can see people categorize this as a, like a next level of artificial intelligence. But technically, it is a result of deep learning. Generative AI, most important thing is, this is generative keyword. This is generated, it is original, it is not existed anywhere. If you ask ChatGP to write, a, write an email, if you ask ChatGP to write, a, write an essay or something like that, that is original, that is not existed, it is not copy and paste from somewhere. For example, if you ask some uh, problem and if you ask to write a code for that, so if you Google, so if you go to Stack Overflow, it's something somewhere written. So Google fetch from the Stack Overflow and showing it to you. But when you go to ChatGPT, it is generating for you. 
So as a result, this code may not 100% accurate. I found many cases that GPT generated code when sometimes I go to code review also can recognize this is not something uh, human written and tested. This is something generated from ChatGPT or somewhere. When it comes to generative AI, it is not just a single architecture. Inside that also you have multiple architectures. Mainly we can find two GANs, which is known as a generative adversarial network and also various variation autoencoders. So as a result, they can not only generate text, they can generate images as well. Deep Art is the best example and also DALI. So they can like get a prompt and generate the image you want. So that is big example for GANs. And also not only that, it can generate original audios, original uh, music. Iva, artificial intelligence virtual artist is the real good example. It can generate original music for you. So now you don't have to uh, write lyrics and put compose music and nothing, but it can generate your song within a matter of minutes. Also to like a synthesia, there is a disease called uh, synesthesia. It is not that. So that can generate videos also. Now you can generate text, you can generate images, videos and music also. So there are various other things it can generate and uh, like do things, but I'm not going to go in detail, but I just want to give an idea what it is. So as a summary, AI is like a universe. So it has a general purpose conventional AI, then it has machine learning, then it has something called neural network. It is a kind of a replication of how human brain works. Then support of a neural network, it has something called deep learning and there is a product as the result of a deep learning called generative AI, which is widely used around the world today to generate uh, text, images, videos and music and so many other things. So I hope you have now a good idea about AI. This is not, as I said, this is not the purpose of teaching AI to someone who is interested to learn AI, but kind of a giving a general idea to general public and uh, to people who don't understand these various categories of AI to explain in a plain English. That's it. So then talk to you in another video. Stay safe. Take care.